what you can do is set boundaries in place exactly. that prevent you from acting on that. Oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. oh my! Yeah, we go. Yeah, like this. Oh. Actually, that's a good point. So actually, I'm torn now. <laughs> I'm torn. I just made it so hard for myself. He got himself into a conundrum, man. All right, next question. Is that? Have you ever used a dating app before? Yes, I have. Oh, oh my God. Okay. How was that? <laughs> if I saw someone I really liked, I used to be like, so what are you doing this weekend? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll it. All right, welcome to another episode of Relationship Status. It's your host today, YLD, AKA Young Love Doctor. That's what that stands for, in case you didn't know. Um, all right, so today we're gonna be talking about all things Young Love, as we always do. Um, we have some very special guests on the show today. Uh, some close friends of mine from work, some friends I just met. Um, and essentially, um, this is gonna be our second panel, right? Oh, yeah, that's a new thing that we started doing here, our relationship status where we try to get multiple people's opinion on some very juicy, toxic, you know, trending topics people want to hear, people want to talk about. There's going to be three phases today. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, the first one is going to be, you know, the standard podcast. We're going to have a conversation about some things that people need to hear about. Uh, I've done some research and I'm ready. The second thing we're going to do today is have an open mic. All right. So people, if you came prepared to drop your hearts, your souls, things that you feel like you need to get off your chest, this is the safest place to do so. No one's going to judge you except the people in the comments. <laughs> All right. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to end this off with a game show. And you know what? We got the... Oh, okay. So, without further ado, as we always kick the show off with, what's your relationship status? Let's start with Ahmad. Hi, my name is Ahmad. I'm from Pittsburgh, and I am in a relationship. Hey, guys. My name is Lily. I am from New York, and I'm single. Hi, everyone. My name is Zion. I'm from Georgia, and I'm single. All right. So, guys, let's just get right into it. First section, what do you guys think about open relationships? Yeah, yeah we're starting off, you know, right right there. Right there. Yeah. In case that's a little uncomfortable. Sorry, guys. I like to get right to it. <clears throat> I think we're living in, like, the best age for open relationships. I think the mediums that we have to, like, communicate and meet people lead to like more possibilities of open relationships um and i think they can be really fun i think you just have to be like in the right mindset i do think there's a lot that goes like on subconsciously on a psychological level though that like i'm not too sure i understand like that goes on in the human brain like mm -hmm. whether we are wired for like monogamous relationships or polygamous relationships mm -hmm. i think it just really depends on the person and i can't judge anyone based on like what they want i don't know where i stand personally on it i feel like i have to understand more about how it would, would affect me because i have never been in one mm. that's really interesting yeah thing. yeah when, like, when you said open relationship i'm thinking like all right two people together in a relationship like dating and then like opening up to like oh bring another man bring another woman to the relationship yeah, that's mm -hmm. the hard thing about yeah it. but then like that's right. when you brought it up it was like wait like when you're dating like multiple people that's like would you think about that as an open relationship too mm. you know like oh mm. like I'm, I'm dating so-and-so but like i'm also talking to this person it's not you know would you would you consider that part of a open relationship yeah that's a good point maybe we should define like, yeah, what define open it. relationship means i mean yeah. to me what i think about an open relationship i think about okay you have a partner okay. but that relationship is not exclusive to you. Oh, that partner, I see. Right. Okay. So you have the abil ability to both emotionally and physically connect with someone else outside of that relationship. It may yeah. be in a regular time period, it may be a permanent thing, or it could be, you know, a flame, temporal stuff that is not necessarily yeah. like, tied to that relationship or tied to you all the time. As long as you are connecting with someone else um, in a physically emotional way. That's how I think about open relationships. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everyone raised really good points. I think for me personally, I cannot be in an open relationship, mm, right? Yeah. Mm, I, mm, I personally yeah. can't do it. Um, but when I see other people, you know, I have other friends who are in open relationships and it works for them, right? I mm. think like ultimately my opinion is I don't think as humans, majority of us are supposed to be 
monogamous. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times relationships, marriages, et cetera, are social constructs that, you know, we've created because, you know, it's beneficial for us and society, et cetera. But, you know, all of that to say, I personally do not think that I could be in an open relationship. Um, Why? Why do you think that? I think perhaps like maybe you know unfortunately may like perhaps maybe i i don't know if i'll ever yikes i don't know i would just get jealous yeah 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 yeah. yeah. if i am i want to be i want the person to be all about me right like i don't want that person to be given the same like energy and attention to another individual right yeah and that's just personally how i feel i really like that you said that too because i think there's this whole concept of like the chill girl that i think has been kind of people have been recognizing that it's okay if you're also not like it's a delicate balance because you want to trust your partner you want to love your partner but you also like it's normal to feel those feelings and i think i see like on like reels now it's like no i want my partner to love me i i want to set boundaries i want them to be respectful of me and it's almost like oh if you're gonna go and have this level of emotional and physical intimacy with a whole not just one other being but multiple beings like what do you really think of me like am i not one of your priorities like yeah. Am I just another like rung on the ladder? So I I really respect what you said. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I totally agree uh, with all of this because you know I don't know like for me when I think about a relationship when I think about a relationship you know I I really think about how you are prioritizing and connecting with the other person in a way that nobody else can. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I just don't understand. I personally don't understand open relationships. Um, it's definitely something that has become a lot more, you know, trendy or slash, you know, more common to do. Um, and you know, I guess I understand why people would be in a state of like, okay, if you really care about the other person, you know, and like nothing can really break that, then you should allow people to explore their desires and, you know, innate flesh what they want to do. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, there are principles, you know, that I think that life you know, created for a reason. Um, and, you know, historically, there's a certain pattern that's supposed to take place and it does that for a reason, right? And sometimes when those things are broken, I think we don't understand what the indirect or direct consequences may really be of that long term. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so that's something to think about. So I, I don't know. Like, it's it's a really complex topic. It's honestly why I decided to ask it because, like, I'm really trying to get inside the mind of someone who would be okay with, like, you know, this other person sleeping with my partner, um, you know, other person emotionally connecting with my partner. It's like, how do you how do you bifurcate that from one person to another in an equal amount of manner? You know what I mean? Or even if it's not equal. And you know, it's also interesting that this thing is religious too, right? And yeah, like, it's like some okay, religious cultures, this is a very normal thing, polygamy. So yeah, actually maybe it's not like a historical law. Maybe there historically is context for it too. Pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree with a lot of things you guys said. It's like you, I feel like you have to really give yourself like when I like when you're going into a relationship, it's about like giving yourself to the other person, you know, focusing on them and like just doing like as much as you can to make sure that they're feeling like, you know, on this pedestal, like this is your person, this is your everything. And as soon as you bring another person into that, it's like, you can't, you can't split that love up. Like you mm-hmm. can't do that. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no equal way to do it. And I wouldn't even be, want to be in, a, in that position to where someone doesn't like love me to the fullest right. or give right. me all of them. Yeah. Right. Right. So. You know, that's a good point. I think a follow-up question we can probably introduce here is, do you guys think that it's possible to be, even be happy in a polygamous like in a polygamous relationship? Like, to be really, I mean, to really enjoy it. To and enjoy poly- that. Yeah, like it's... Polygamous, it's, like three people in one relationship? Yeah, basically. Um, um, yeah. So, for example, like you, you know, you as a man are, you know, have four wives. Like, can you really make all four wives happy and devote enough attention to each? Like, or yeah. vice versa, right? Like, you're a woman and you have multiple men that you are, you know, talking to at the same time. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Think about that? I feel like on an evolutionary level, like, we actually can't, it's, we can't really have, sorry, we're not meant to sustain relationships with more than 150 people. I think that's, like, a s- statistic that Whoa. I read. Yeah, yeah. like, because if you think about it, like, we, like, for thousands and thousands of years we grew up in these small communities like rural communities we this is like the first time in our history where we're living in cities with multiple millions of people and so i i think the idea that you can like sustain multiple relationships or meet the amount of people that we're scrolling through hinge and tinder today like our brains are not 
wired to handle that. Mm. And so I guess you could, and I think when you talk about polygamous relationships, you're also really like commodifying people. Like you're saying, oh, I have one, two, three, four wives. If I buy them, you know, $50 worth of stuff each day, like that's enough. But I, I think there's a lot that goes into stuff on an emotional level that you can't really quantify. And I don't really know if, Mm. For me personally, I don't know if I'm like able to handle that. I can't yeah. really speak for humanity. There's always exceptions, but that's kind of how I feel. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it's difficult because I think from all of our perspectives, we all don't think we can do monogamy uh, or polygamy. But I feel like if you spoke to somebody who was in a, like a polyamorous relationship, mm. their thought process on this would be different. And I think yeah. it's because I generally believe it's a person to person thing, right? Mm. I think that there are some people who are capable of having very deep emotional connections to two people at the same time are those mm. equal i don't think like i i don't think equals hard right are they different yes mm. but if you think about it like think mm. about the people you've connected with connected with over your lifetime right you connect with them in different ways even if you've ever been fortunate to be in love with like two people even if it's at different times right i feel like the what you felt for them is similar, but also like different. Like you end up falling in love with them in a different way or you end up like feeling for them in a different way. Mm. I think that some people just happen to be able to like, you know, feel that like with different people at the same time and somehow are okay to like move forward with it and like be happy with it and be okay with it mm. and understand it and process it too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So like, I, I don't personally know anyone in a polyamorous relationship. Or, so like, I'm not really sure what the perspective is. Like, I wish I had that. Like, yeah. I think it would help me like understand more yeah. and be able to give the perspective because like you, I think you said you had some friends in those situations. Mm -hmm. Like what are the, like how, how do they speak about it? Yeah. You know? It's interesting because some it's where it's like they have a main, like a main person and they're mm -hmm. both each other's mains and then they have others. They welcome in. They have this very like open like dialogue and everybody knows. And then other people, it's just like, okay, we have like, I feel like for the for the most part in like me experiencing other people who like my other relationships who have like or who are in like polyamorous relationships they have like a main and then there's people who they like introduce mm. um but it seems to work for them and they seem to be happy about it and uh, yeah pretty interesting well, very interesting. I feel like I've heard the idea that like if you have a threesome, for example, one night, like you should never, like the third person should never be like someone you know. Like if you, because like they're like I don't know how. I think we say we're okay with it, but like I feel like you can't really get that friendship. You're always gonna look at that third person if you do have some kind of friendship with them, like in a special way, because like I you're clearly you you're clear. Well, you're clearly attracted to them if you've had intimate. Like, if you've had, like, sex with them, like, you're clearly attracted to them. And, like, again, how does that play on the brain? I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's interesting to, s to hear that, like, someone has, like, a main and then people introduce. Because I, I feel like I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, and just sense. one, actually, I um was having this conversation with this one person who we had just met. And, I don't know, he felt like disclosing his, you know, relationships. And I was like, okay. But he was explaining how he had, like, a wife and a girlfriend but over like a span of time he started like even though he's in love with both he started feeling more connected to the girlfriend over the wife mm -hmm. like over a, a span of time oh. so i don't know maybe also to like your dynamics and yeah love is dynamic love is dynamic yeah, yeah i don't know i don't know super interesting this is the most i've ever talked about open relationships in my life <laughs> this is the most i've learned about i mean okay so i i come from a very and i'm just gonna re introduce religion in this just like yeah. heads up but you know i come from a very christian background and so like you know the whole idea of that has been so taboo mm -hmm. and um like we don't really talk about it and i feel like in nigerian culture especially too it's not something that we really talk about um especially from the christian side of things and so it's just like very interesting to see it come into light understanding it from the other person's perspective and like what can be going on even chemically like in their mind like to allow or yeah. to kind of thrive in that kind of setting um it's just super interesting yeah yeah i wonder if you could like can you like have a family like you have children involved with yeah them? like yeah. you know like, everybody like each other can you have a happy family yeah like a cohesive family yeah i don't know what that looks like yeah yeah mm. all right well let's uh let's dial back a little bit um, it started off a little spicy. Let's uh, get you know a little bit more. 
kind of cruise. Um, the second question that I wanted to ask is, what do you guys, or what are your guys' opinions on um, this concept of men kind of failing at dating nowadays, right? Or do you guys agree with that? Do you guys think that in general, men have even stopped dating? Um, or do you think it's just not exclusive to men? Do you think this is like a, a generational thing? Like all of us have kind of finding it a little bit more complicated to situate in relationships and to, you know, thrive in them. Um, is that a trend that you guys have seen? Any thoughts yeah. on this at all? I have a few thoughts on it. Mm, so mm, mm. I, I, my opinion is that I do think it's a generational thing. I think this, and this also goes back to like social media. So I really believe that there's like a girl side of TikTok and a guy side of TikTok. Whenever I scroll, like, on my feed versus like a guy friend's feed, I'd be like, oh my gosh, guys like always do this. And then the guy side is like, oh, girls always do this. Or they, and it's like both genders are in this like Mm. stuck in this mentality of like, oh, it's the other gender's problem. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I've had a lot of like shitty situations. Like I feel like every single, a lot of my girlfriends are single. And like, I feel like Mm. we talk about like, oh, men men suck but it's like no men don't suck like we should all be taking account because for example there was Mm -hmm. one situation where i in like the fall where i really liked this guy and i really enjoyed getting to know him and like thought we had a connection like we stayed till three in the morning just talking and whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then like he kept being like oh i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and i was like okay like he like whatever i guess he doesn't like me but then i was also doing that the same thing to like another guy who i guess i wasn't that into but like i didn't want to communicate that with him and Mm -hmm. i was like oh shit like I am just doing the same thing. And like, we're all part of the problem. I think we all need to acknowledge that we're part of the problem. And Mm. I think a lot has to do with like instant gratification and the fact that we can get sex and like get, can get all these things without committing. So I think that's the the problem at the end of the day. Wow. Yeah. Just, I was, I was going to say, I think the reason is part of the reason is hookup culture. So just bound like what you said, I think it's hookup culture. I think it's probably bigger so again, generationally, right? Because I feel like if we go back to our parents' generation, mm-hmm. only kind of culture was as big of a, of a thing, especially mm-hmm. not in our grandparents' generation. Right. Not accepted. Right? Right. Yeah, it like, so. was not a thing. Yeah. So back to instant gratification, you know, I I have another friend who's married, right? So, you know, she got married 24, and she was saying she, her take on why a lot of women are, you know, get into these, like, long-term relationships and don't end up with a ring is because they're doing wifey, they're doing wifey, mm, yeah. wifey things Absolutely. Yeah. Mm, without, so the, before becoming a wife, right? Mm. And so if we, like, take it real that back, part. right? Like, let's, like, sit on that. No, right? that part. I gotta let that simmer but, a little bit. Right? Yeah. And now I, you know, in terms of, like, premarital sex like it's i it's not like i'm like against it right like people are gonna do what people are gonna do right but like perhaps maybe i'm not saying it's always true for everything but like back to the hookup culture maybe maybe that is you know kind of leading to why people you know why people aren't people i don't think we should just put it on the men but why people aren't really feeling the need that they can date because you know you can kind of get that feeling of like oh i'm in a relationship yes. i mean relationship things without mm. actually having to commit to that other person mm. and i also think another part of it and maybe this is from the perspective of being a woman but i do think that women have lowered their standards mm. um in this generation so true. um true. just coming for it man. Yeah. so oh, if we're thinking yeah, about from the perspective of why men aren't dating right like they don't like, like, they, they, don't don't like, they don't really need exactly right like, they if don't you're really not ever like if you're giving emotional intimacy like why does why does he need to commit there we go and wow. let's like take a step back from physical intimacy because i feel like that's very controversial and people you know i think people have different like thought process but, like let's talk about emotional intimacy which i feel like is not spoken about enough i feel like a lot of times women are given out their emotional intimacy to men and men are like men need like you know female or just in this context right like you know if you're a man who is attracted to women they you need female intimacy right right, right. Like, come on now like, no i mean that's right yeah that's true and so if you're getting it for free you don't really have to commit like why why would i date mm. Damn, mm. that's so powerful yeah no i think that's so real like even going back to the like this being a generation thing like i totally agree with that uh because like you have like there's another thing you got access to like like we weren't meant to know what everybody's thinking right like everybody in the world we have like all of these like we know what everybody's thinking go on twitter go on like all these all the social media 
And you have access to, like, all these people across the world. Like, you just swipe, 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 or just talk to whoever. And so it's like you have... People always think, oh, the grass is always growing on the other side. If this isn't working out, yeah. well, I could just, you know, hop on my phone and literally find somebody else in an instant. Mm -hmm. And so that's why people are so less committed to pursuing and staying and, like, making a relationship um, make a relationship last because it's like, oh, I can give up so easily and switch and just switch. And then, like, there really aren't any, aren't any consequences. Right. Like, the minimal. Right, right. So I think, I think that's definitely a big part of it. I think that's definitely a big part of it. Um, and, yeah, like, the other thing, like, I think one of you said that uh, women have lowered their standards. Mm. It's like, I think men get away with, all right, doing the bare minimum. And then yeah. they still do what they want at it's the like end. It's like weaponized incompetency. Like, oh, like, yeah. Gosh. That's, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a big turn. That's, that's a yeah, I have to yeah. Yeah. Like, like, replay that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say it again? Well, <laughs> yeah, no, there's this whole concept of weaponized incompetency. Like, oh, like, oh, why Like, why do you need me to text you every day? Like, I'm really bad with my phone. Or like, oh, yeah, bro, yeah, that's like, a good point, dog. Like, bro, like 45 seconds of being like, hey, just like thought of you, like checking in. Like, what? That, and, like, you can be the most secure person in the world. And that, coming from your significant other, will, like, just, it builds the relationship. Mm. And I'm starting to think, like, if you're not doing that, if you're not accommodating to people's needs like that, mm. you don't really, truly care that much about that person. No, for sure. You know what's actually a good point? Or something that I'm not thinking about? I wonder if that's because women mature faster than men. No? This is something that I've heard a lot. Um, and I think science actually backs this. You know, I'm not like a scientist or anything. I do work in healthcare. Thank you. But, <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking back in my relationship. You know, uh, when I first started, like, I'm definitely not the guy like that when I first met my wife today. Really? Um, I'm not that guy. Like, I'm like, really? I'm very 100% different. Mm. Like, uh, the way I carry her now, the way I prioritize her, the way I respond to her yeah. first, like, if I get any other text, like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Making sure that when she's coming home and like I'm at the door, like to like said, I work from home. So like I'm at the door to like bring her bag in and like, you know, oh, I'm not going out tonight. Like I'm going to get dinner with her instead. Like yeah. those kind of things I just did not think about when I was like 18, 19, wow. 20. Um, but there are 23 year olds that are doing what you I was gonna say, do. I was say, doing at 23 year olds like, probably yo. can think like what I'm thinking too, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? And it's not because of the age per se. I think, I think you get to a, I think it's yeah. really about the experience. Like, yeah. there were experiences that made me who I am. It's not a function of age. It was a function of time, I guess, because it allowed me to experience it. Yeah. But, like, some people who are 23 have not, even had they, all, they had all this time, they didn't have the experience of going through the fire of, like, you know, when you're a man, you act a certain way. When you're a man, you're a certain nonchalance. You have a certain amount of nonchalance towards the other woman. The consequences of that can be very drastic. Yeah. Especially for your relationship and for your happiness. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, I would say I had the benefit and the fortune of being able to feel that young. That's what I would attribute to, like, I have no idea where I was going with where, where was that coming from? I think you're just speaking from your heart. Men. And I think that's you know, and, and thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I have to drop that on. I just have to drop that out there. You know what I mean? Just Men feel too. Like. <laughs> I have a question for you guys, unless you want to go for the next topic. No, no. Let's, like, drill down. So do you think men should be the one to pursue the woman or do you think that it doesn't matter mm, what a great question I, I, to say about that. I think that men should pursue Ooh, the woman. okay um <laughs> be, i feel like again feminist. i'm a feminist yes but i also like in certain regards there are certain things where i do believe in like gender Okay, um, gender roles. Which I know we've heard of, like gender. Oh, this is twenty twenty three. Yes, it is. But I do feel like again, like I feel like innately, like men are hunters, mm. right? And like I feel like if a man really wants me or is for me, he's going to pursue me. I'm just going to mm. sit back mm. and let you know the universe or whatever like lead the man to come and pursue me. I mm. really. Mm. I don't know. I feel like if I'm doing too much, if I have to do too much, does he really want me? I don't know. I don't mm. know. Mm. No, that's a good point. I think that's a very good point. Um, and, you know, how I feel about this when it comes to gender roles um, is that you're right. That there's a evolutionary slash biological like forces within a man and a woman, right, that play to our strengths, right? We have hormonal responses to certain things. Men are a little bit more aggressive, right? We're, we're taught from birth, like, to 
you know, slap each other in the face, box each other, fight around. Like, we're, you know, we get what, like, you know, I'm saying, well, not only get what we want, but like, you know, we're naturally very, I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, we're just attracted to, to, to like fighting and to like striving for what we want to do. And we're taught from like a young age, like, you know, based on like traditional generals and traditional parental guidance is like, you know, as a man, you got to be tough, you got to do this and that. And so, like, um, that's reinforced also by like physical build. Like you can even see in us, like we have naturally, we're naturally able to get more strength because we're wired for pursuing things. We're wired for hunting down things like you said. So like that applies into relationships as well. And so like, I also feel like it's, you know, it's also like not a bad thing that that is the way that it is. Right. Like, I feel like so it, the fact that someone has that role, it just makes it easier for the opposite sex. Like, you know what I mean? It makes it easier for the opposite person. Like, to be like, yeah, to get pursued. Like, I don't have to do another work. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm doing another work. I mean, you know, it's like you make yourself presentable and attractive, but like, you know, I also feel like that's a, like, isn't it great that like, you know, you don't, you don't have to do the chasing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of work. It's like, you got to think about it. You got to be like, oh, pick up a line I'm going to have. Like, you know what I'm saying? I spent some money and shit. Like, I think it's actually goaded that like, you know, yeah. you can just have the luxury. Well, I don't say luxury, but there's some benefits to that. So, you know, I don't know. That's, that's kind of like what I think about it. Yeah, I think I think so too. Like I think men should pursue the women. Like I think I think it's also like the when it comes to like the gratification from it. Like I think people, like men, like they want to be challenged to like like have a goal and to like get that. And so like if it's like really easy, like yeah. I, that's another thing. Like if things like if something's too easy, then it's like, do I even really want it at the end of the day? So if someone's like blowing my yeah. phone, like, oh, call me all the time. It's like, oh, like, you know, they're here and I know they're there, but because it's so easy and so accessible, mm. I don't really want it as much. Mm. And so, like the playing hard to get type of thing, like I think that I think that helps. You know, mm. like I think it helps like the pursuit. I think it helps like the man work hard because that's the other thing. Like we go back to, you know, do men like are men doing the things to are are they are they when it comes to dating are they like reaching like the standard or are they just like yeah. you know doing mm. the bare minimum right? Mm. And mm. if you let somebody do the bare minimum, then you're not gonna get you know, that feeling that, you know, that pursuit, you're not going to get, you know, everything that, you know, most people look for in a relationship, like, is to be adored, is to be thought of all the time, mm. you know, for someone to bring them flowers, like, if, you know, someone's always, you know, if the girl or, like, the other person is always reaching out and just staying on top of them, guy might just say, ah, you know, there's all these other people in the city, right. you know, right. it's, like, it's I can, too easy, you're accessible, like, I, can come, I can come back to this any time. Yeah. It's also like, you know, it's like a psychological thing too. If you can have it, then like, does that make you feel like it's worth something, right? Yeah. Like, if you don't have to work for it, if you don't have to yeah. kind of ride for it, then that is kind of like the worth of the op- like not ooh, said object. Whoa, that's, yeah, that's not what I meant. See, this so is, but this is so I I'm so historically I have actually really enjoyed the chase. Um, I mm. really like pursuing people and being very clear and being very direct I oh wow like, so you enjoy chasing i don't or, even think chasing, of it as like, chasing you know, yeah. i mean i think of it as like i like i don't know because i feel like it's also a lot of pressure on you. so okay historically yes i did like the chase recently i feel like i'm leaning a little bit into into your camp because when i do reflect like i grew up in more a little bit more of a matriarchal household than that like my mom makes more than my dad and like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like we immigrated from bulgaria and mm-hmm. like honestly like just the women like in my family really carry a lot mm. i do think that placed a big burden though like on my mom because she was like i have three kids like and my dad does it like a lot for our family too but like he's a little bit more like intellectual and like what like my point is that i feel like i grew up in a very strong household a very united household mm-hmm. but i think that did condition me to be like oh like i have to like do the chase i have to like make a lot of money i have to do mm. but now i'm a little bit like tuning into like the divine feminine which i see a lot on like reels and like yeah i'm, I'm gonna like embrace being pampered i do think men do want to provide a lot and mm-hmm, i think mm-hmm. it's okay to let them provide like just allowing myself to step back and say okay i do provide a lot in a relationship i do provide emotional support and like all these things so like let him match my energy um there was a study that came up by the Smithsonian, though, that sh- showed that women have actually hunted a lot in the past, though. So this whole concept Whoa. of men being hunters, I do want to play devil- devil's advocate to that. It came out in June of this year. So I think a little bit more study needs to be done around that. But I think I think I lean more towards you guys now because it's, it is very tiring. Like, I'm like, I want you to like, I bring a lot to the table and I want you to match my energy. So that's kind of where I stand today. 
Facts. No, that's 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 energy. Oh, yeah, you guys should like emulate that. I was like really great energy. <laughs>